Right at this moment, there was a pop in my ear and I knew immediately something was very, very wrong. Hi, I'm Raya. And I'm Louis. We've spent the last year and a half living out of vehicles around North and Central America and Europe. We've also just driven our converted school bus to our land in an eco community in Costa Rica, where we're so excited to start making plans to build our dream house on. But first, we're about to embark on our biggest adventure yet of growing our family. We can't wait to share all of that and more with you, so make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already. This week, we have joined Kara and Nate on an exciting adventure in the Mediterranean, cruising between the Spanish Balearic Islands on a 100% solar-powered yacht. We are starting in Ibiza and ending up in Mallorca, where we're meeting some other friends you may know, Eamon and Beck. For the last week, Kara and Nate have been living on this boat with Riley and Elena from Sailing La Vagabond, and we got to overlap for one day before they got off board. And last but not least, we have Captain Mike, who is going to be looking after us this week. Besides all the amazing reunions, I'm so excited to spend the week living on this beautiful boat and exploring part of the world that I've never been to before. Also, if you're interested in how this boat works, I've filmed a whole detailed video on my channel doing a breakdown of all the technical specs, which you can check in the description below. Also, it was Raya's 30th birthday last week and we didn't get to celebrate properly, so I'm helping organize a surprise for her. I've recruited Eamon and Beck. They're gonna pick up some supplies, some balloons and things, and then we're hoping to pull off a surprise celebration for her. And I, I don't think she has any idea. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh, this is a dangerous place. Oh, I dropped my, oh. It's okay. Don't drop like your phone or shit. Oh my God. <laughs> Imagine if I just fell in with everything. Okay. <laughs> Are you recording any of that? Yeah, I've got it on camera. Okay, almost fell in. We're all good. All right, so we just got onto the yacht and I haven't really looked around yet, so show us around. Here we go. Welcome to the Silent 55, mm -hmm. which means it is 55 feet. Here is what we call the galley. The kitchen has literally everything you ever want dishwasher, a pretty solid coffee maker. That I, we actually, use I actually already made it. <laughs> <laughs> Blender, toaster, juicer, Ooh. which we haven't used yet. And most importantly, tons of storage. Like all these drawers just hold like all of our dishes, all of our pans, yeah. mugs, silverware. This wear. almost feels like an unnecessary amount of space when you've lived in vans. Uh, seating area, eight people, tons of storage back there. You're gonna have little dinner parties here later. Yeah, board game yeah. nights. Helm number one. A helm is where the captain sits, if you didn't know. I learned a lot of new words. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. But the funny thing about this camera is you have uh, a 360 uh, view. That's And you can be kind of creepy and like zoom in. <laughs> <laughs> a storage area or a little mat bed. Ooh. A nook. Or we can all cuddle there and watch a movie. Oh yeah, let's do it. Oh, oh, this is my favorite. Ready? Yeah. This is just, you know, Casual cabinet. Yeah. Wrong. It is a desk. <gasps> oh, wow. Never. Right? Yeah, very cool. So you can sit there, do your work, and then it disappears. There's a bedroom down there. It's not our bedroom, but let's show you around our bedroom. Which Karen's cleaned up for us. Thank you. Oh, so nice. I mean, very spacious, so super comfy. We even have a closet we can hang clothes up. It's perfect, I don't know what more we need. And we have our own bathroom too. So you're saying everyone has their own shower? Everyone has their own toilet Luxury. and shower. Yeah. I mean, and it works like a normal shower. Amazing, I really like the sink too, the leaf. Yeah. so cool. And there's little windows everywhere. I'm stealing that idea. <laughs> yeah, I've never spent more than like one or two nights maybe on a boat, so a whole week. I'm very excited. Wow. So nice. This is no doubt my favorite place to hang out when we're cruising. Down on this trampoline. Oh, yeah. The breeze from the water coming up through here with the sunshine. It's just unbeatable. This is down into my bedroom. Nice. So some mornings I just pop up right here and go straight to my spot with my coffee. You can literally come out of that. <laughs> yeah. Here's my sweatshirt I dropped in the sea. We're gonna come back to this. This is my mission this week, is to learn how to ride the, what is it, flight board? Flight board, yeah. It's like an aerofoil electric surfboard. It's gonna be amazing. This is the back deck. What, wait, what's this called? 
fly bridge. Oh, dang it. <laughs> this is a cool spot. Yeah. Join Nate up here. And the, can you drive the boat from here? Yeah, so this whole control panel raises up. Whoa. And then you can just chill here. And as long as it's a nice day, you can just drive from up top. It has all the oh, same nice. controls just... as downstairs. Wait, is there like a steering wheel? No, so That's the you want to see? Part. So there's, there's two ways to steer this boat. With a little dial. With the dial or with that. Yep. Huh. But, or literally, you just you just press on the screen where you want to go and you just say, take me there. I kind of feel like I'd want a, one of those big pirate ship wheels <laughs> yeah. that's like this big though, just for the fun That's of it. That's Riley and Elena felt. They were like, this is the most unsatisfying way to, yeah, you can't <laughs> to just drive a like, boat. Boop, boop. Yeah. We're stocking up for the week on the boat. I think we could survive for a month and see if we had to. Yeah, I think so. I'm particularly happy about the quantity of bananas we have. All right, we are back. Only 400 <laughs> euros. <laughs> Nobody went in the water. And we're gonna eat like queens. We've got this whole thing for 400 euros. Pretty incredible. We are finally away. We are leaving the marina in Ibiza. And I don't even know where we're heading next. Wow, it's really silent. Isn't it amazing? amazing? Silence. Where are we heading? No idea, do you know? No. <laughs> Just out to sea, I think. One of the best things about this boat is this flight board and it's got a battery that goes in here and then it hovers above the water. Nate's about to take this one out. Did he just step onto it and go? Yeah. If you step onto it, will it just float with you on it like this? If the water is perfectly still, then it's doable, but as soon as there's a wave, like it's very wobbly, but as soon as you get going, it's much more stable. I've been seeing these electric foil boards for years and I've been so, so excited to try one. Once I got the hang of it, it was everything I'd hoped for. Gliding above the water so smoothly, it really felt like I was flying. And with the open ocean in front of me and a 20 mile range on its battery, it immediately gave me exciting ideas of future e-foil adventures we could go on. Obviously, there's a bit of a learning curve. But like many new activities, our body and mind learn to find balance and understand how to react to new sensations. I like approaching problem solving with trial and error. And as long as those errors aren't too high risk, it's a great way to learn fast. And the more you fall down, the more you learn to avoid it. <laughs> I think I'm gonna call it a day. I just don't wanna have a bad fall, you know? For sure. And then scare myself. Good morning from Ibiza. We have spent the last few days on the boat with Karen and Nate. It's been amazing. I feel like we're getting used to boat life now. We got a little routine going. And yesterday, Nate actually took over as captain and brought us all the way over to San Antonio. And today, we are gonna carry on cruising around the coast on the west side of the island, have a lot of fun. And when we park up tonight, we're parking up in the north. And then tomorrow, we're gonna do a big crossing over to Mallorca. Yeah, full day. <laughs> Raya is in the shower, so I've just pulled Kara and Nate aside and we are just chatting about doing a surprise birthday celebration for Raya. Hopefully the plan is we're going to be meeting with Eamon and Beck in Mallorca in a couple of days. So we're thinking that's when we should do the actual celebration, but we're still scheming and trying to find like some fun surprise we can do. I think the benefit of bringing Eamon and Beck in is that they're not currently on the boat. Mm. So it can be a better surprise mm. if we can organize things before they get on. Cool. I love surprises. I love it. So today we're going to be traveling from here. Hopefully find a nice little beach or spot in an hour or two and then head up here for sunset. <laughs> So interesting of this boat because it's silent. Obviously, that's the whole point. Silent yachts, but it really is like other than the water splashing, you don't hear the noise of the motors or anything because they're electric. I'm glad we're going back to like the secluded little coves and stuff. I mean, this is like the Ibiza that most people know about, but I prefer the small little places that you can't really get to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We did take a stroll into town last night, and it was interesting. It was like clubs and bars and tourists and it's like you know kind of fun but yeah this is this, this is, is more our vibe yeah exactly yeah. 
So we set off along the coast and southern tip of Ibiza, and in no desperate rush or with agenda, we allowed ourselves plenty of time to cruise and just enjoy the journey. Like the solar panels on the boat, we charged up from the sunlight, soaking in all the goodness, riding the waves and admiring the raw nature, the sheer immensity of the Mediterranean Sea, let alone all the oceans on Earth. So unfathomably vast, looking up at the daunting high cliffs of the island gave me so much respect for this beautiful planet we get to call our home. Definitely getting pretty choppy out here. The deck is soaked where the spray just came up. I'm sitting down for now. I feel like this is, this feels a bit more chill than trying to stand up. How are you feeling, Nate? Yeah, so far so good. <laughs> if this was day one, I would definitely be sick, but I feel like my body's kind of gotten used to the waves over the last 10 days. <laughs> what are the uh, tips for not feeling seasick? Uh, definitely just spend as much time outside as possible. Look at the horizon. We're eating some ginger inside. Don't film. Don't sit behind your computer and don't go downstairs. Right now I have to pee really bad, but there's no way I'm going downstairs to the toilet. How are you feeling? I'm good. Being out here is actually way better than sitting inside. I wasn't feeling great inside, but out here I can like predict when the big waves are gonna come so I can like move my body with it way better. I did not think we were going to make it here for lunch. Well, it's only 1.30. I know, it's so good. Okay, as we're approaching the little cove that we're trying to get to, there's this big rock in the way here. And Captain Mike's saying we can cut around it this way, which I think is very ambitious. But if we have a look at the chart, it looks doable. So we just have to go through this area here, right? Yeah. Does that indicate the depth? water? Yeah, meters, yeah. Uh, What's the shallowest water the boat can be in? Say, uh, say one meter twenty. Okay. One meter twenty, but this is now with waves. We have to be quite careful. Okay, that's where we're heading, where there's that little rock poking out of the sea. There's a beach behind it. We've arrived at this little cove. This is where we're gonna try and chill for the rest of the day. Hopefully watch the sunset from here. Mike, the captain, saying we might be able to swing around and anchor in between this boat and the beach. I think first priority is probably lunch though. Yeah. What, what are you guys thinking? For sure. I'm starving. <laughs> okay, what are we doing for lunch? So for lunch, we are going to make sushi we found some nori in the supermarket and we got excited. And we've even got some homemade pickled ginger. Did you end up making it? Um, I did my best. It's in the process of pickling. It's not very pretty. <laughs> no, it's perfect. Yeah. We're gonna do cucumber, pepper, carrot, avocado, and sesame Yeah. All right, so we have our homemade sushi ready to go with all the different toppings. Homemade pickled ginger, two different types of sesame seeds, cucumber, avocado, peppers, carrots. We tried to make sushi rice with risotto rice. <laughs> we'll see what happens. And then we've got the nori to roll it all up. I'm excited. And none of these guys have made their own sushi before, so. I'm really curious about the homemade pickled ginger. Woo! <laughs> Too much. Tastes like it's been marinated in the ocean. <laughs> really? Sorry. <laughs> We have finished our delicious homemade sushi lunch and we're about to jump in now and swim, snorkel, dive, have some fun in the water. I'm very ready for this. And the sea has calmed down. It's pretty nice in this cove. I think this is gonna be a lovely spot to swim.
Right at this moment, there was a pop in my ear and I knew immediately something was very, very wrong. I just about managed to climb back onto the boat, but everything was spinning and I felt a stabbing pain and severe nausea. I couldn't even bring myself to talk as the pain was so overwhelming, I struggled to construct a sentence. Thankfully, after a few minutes, and with the help of chewing some chewing gum, the pain subsided. I've, I've never heard of water hurting someone's ear. It must have, it's something to do with, maybe I've got a damaged eardrum, mm. and at a certain angle. Yeah, it gets back somewhere it shouldn't be. Yeah. Well, I almost uh. vomited from the pain, it was so bad. I didn't know oh. if you were gonna end up in the hospital, so I picked up the camera. Oh yeah, <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> That was the craziest thing. I was swimming kind of sideways underwater and something just popped in my ear and I was in excruciating pain. Like, honestly like eight out of 10 pain for like five minutes, shaking, almost vomited from the pain. And then I've just been lying on my side and chewing, chewing gum and the pain's almost gone now, which is such a relief. I thought I was gonna be like wiped out for the rest of the evening, but I feel okay. I don't know what that was. If anyone knows about inner ear pain when you're swimming, let me know in the comments. I don't know what it is. Maybe I've got like a damaged eardrum or something. On the back of the boat, there's these little portable, not portable. But they... Showers, like hot water yeah. to rinse off. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. <laughs> oh, it's so hot. Ah! Oh, it's too hot. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Are you enjoying it? Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> You're almost spoiling on your stomach. With some more time practicing on the flight board, we decided that when Eamon and Beck arrived to join us, we would have to have a tournament of some kind. And you can look forward to that in next week's Ooh. vlog. Let's go. I know, I'm ready. Captain Mike's giving us some advice on how to get the boat ashore. Do you know what? I don't even know the name of our boat. What's the name of our boat? Silent, Silent Seven. Seven. Silent Seven? Yeah. Okay. Very original. Yeah. This is the seventh one built. All right, we're getting shallow, mate. Just tell me when. I mean, to be fair, I think I can just jump out. That's pretty amazing. We did it! Yeah. Yeah. Now, now we just have to pull it very far out of the water so it doesn't float away. We made it ashore. Yes. With. No drama, which is lovely. <laughs> and so every Sunday night, luckily it's a Sunday, there's a drum circle that gathers on this beach. And Nate had heard about it, and that's why specifically why we came to this cove. And it takes us back to living in Venice, because yeah. this is the same thing. Sunday, beach, sunset, drum circle. And we're rushing over there now to yeah. catch the end of it. The sun's very close to setting, so we just made it. It's cool. I'm glad this works out. a lot of fun. I wasn't actually expecting to be able to join in the drumming, but I looked down, there was a spare drum, I was like, may as well. This side of the island to me is like a million time better vibes than where we just woke up. The party area just feels energetically heavy and here everyone's like dancing and loving life. And well, this is also the party area, but this is our kind of party. Yeah. Drumming. Yeah. Can I yeah. just give you an outside perspective of how you ended up on the drums? It was like, <laughs> Oh, Louis getting kind of close to the band to film. Oh, Louis standing right next to the band and he's filming. Oh, he's dancing. That's kind of cute. Oh, Louis has a drum. <laughs> Louis has now joined the band. Only Louis. That was awesome. 
That was awesome. Okay, we have a tradition that the second you see the sun dip, you have to kiss. So okay. we're passing that on to you guys, I wherever you are in the world. It's technically behind a cloud right now. Something I'm always struggling to do is find good tank tops. I'm a tank top person, in case you didn't know. But we found some good ones. Yes, I like that. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so we all got friendship bracelets. The girls got matching ones and the boys got matching That's ones. ones so the girls got some really Yeah, cute these are our ones. ones. And the chain is our heart. Yeah. And then the boy, this is Louie's green one. And Nate's tan one. And Nate's still wearing our wedding bracelet too. I, I keep forgetting to put my back on. <laughs> I haven't taken I it off since we left Costa Rica. For me, this was a big step tonight, learning how to beach the dinghy on land. Yeah. So I feel like I've learned something and grown a little bit as a person. You did well. Now need to tie the boat up on these little things, That's true. and then we can lift, hoist it out of the water. Okay, so we've been saying for ages that Louis needs to learn a few recipes to cook for when I'm like really pregnant and need his help cooking. And this is Kara's famous peanut butter ramen recipe, which apparently she says is very easy. So Louis's gonna be her sous chef tonight and learn how to make it. Are you ready? Yes, <laughs> I'm ready. Also, I haven't been pulling my weight on the boat much in the last few days so I feel like I want to contribute as much as possible even though I don't feel particularly skilled in the kitchen like Raya said I need to learn so step one instant ramen if you're just feeling really overwhelmed baby's crying Raya's tired simplest version is you cook the ramen and throw a scoop of peanut butter okay can't that's go wrong basic with that. we're gonna make it much fancier than that do you know how to chop garlic yeah you crush it like this oh. Chop the garlic. What's next? Beautifully done, my friend. Next, you will do the exact same thing with this ginger, mm -hmm. and then we'll do onions, peppers, and mushrooms. Nice. Basically, the base of any good meal. So all we've done is sesame oil, and now our roots. vegetables, all the flavors that we're going to uh, we use scare, instead of these flavors. We're going to throw away the flavor pack. This is the size of our baby right now? No, it's a lemon. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was this, last week. That was last week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that just looks like this. Nice and sauteed. And then literally after this, you make ramen as you would, except for I like to just chuck it all in one pan. I'm just pouring in some vegetable broth. You can use water. Ooh, but I like to make bar. it as tasty as possible. Just let them boil for And a then minute. is it the last step is the peanut butter? That's the last Ooh. step. Well, it's second to last step. They have to garnish. Oh, okay. As far as the peanut butter measurements go, you measure with your heart. <laughs> but I would guess one scoop per bag of ramen. So like one, two, three, four. You literally cannot eat Peanut butter ramen without the garnishes. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are the garnishes? Out. Lime, coriander. And sesame seeds. Yeah. Rye's found a mixed bag of nuts and decided to start picking out <laughs> the peanuts, which is a lot of work, but. <laughs> Worth it. Worth it. My vote is we put the nuts in the middle. People that have the patience to pick them out, put them on their food can do that. And then people that are hungry can just eat. Yours, yours has the least cilantro on it. Okay, come on. And like the least it. peanuts. And the least peanuts. Because <laughs> you complained about the peanuts. No. Taste test. Ooh. Should we do a little circle of gratitude first? Yes. Ooh. Oh, yes. Thank you guys so much for inviting us on here. It's been such an amazing week already, and I'm just so grateful to have this much time with you. I'm super grateful that we got to be in person when you told me you were having a child. Like, I've replayed that moment in my head so many times. I, I think today's been really special. I think getting to be with you while you've put the announcement out into the world and kind of like get the behind the scenes of everybody's reaction to it has been 
really fun. I was thinking that I was just walking up the stairs. I was like, I love these guys. I was like, Aww. I feel like like you're some of our best friends. I'm like, this is wild because we really haven't hung out that much. But so yeah, I'm grateful for good friendship and for your invitation to be here. One happy tea, friends. Cheers to Sid crossing tomorrow. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I think it's going to be pretty chill. Okay, let's do a little taste test. Are you kidding me? Whoa. <gasps> How it's so mm. good. Yeah. I actually didn't taste test it before I put it on. It's so good. Wow. Dinner was delicious. We just finished. And we're going to play this very exciting game now. <laughs> it's called Taco Cat Goat Cheese Pizza. You go around saying those words in order. And these cards are like, this is a goat card. So I'm going to go first and go taco. So if that was a taco, <laughs> then it's whoever can get to it first. Um, whoever gets to it last has to pick up the whole thing. <laughs> this game is all about reaction time. Yeah. Focus. Whoever's brain is the quickest. I think this is the highest adrenaline card game I've ever played. <laughs> yeah. There's four special cards, and if you see this, you have to do these different things. It's like narwhal, gorilla, groundhog, uh -huh. taco. Cat. Cat. Oh. Yes. Taco. Cat. Goat. Cheese. Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> if you flinch, you have to take it. Darn it. Cheese. <laughs> I don't even I was like... <laughs> <laughs> Taco. Oh no! <laughs> that is such a delayed reaction! Taco. Oh! <laughs> Go. Cheese. Oh. <laughs> Cat. Oh! 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 It's a lucky card because I can see yeah. the foot towards me. Okay, we only have like two minutes. <gasps> We've just put on these little party hats. Yeah. Okay, you go first. Okay. If somehow you're not subscribed to Kara and Nate already, you absolutely have to. Whether they're surviving on an island for days, jogging at the North Pole, or riding the most expensive train in the world, one thing that's always there is their incredible storytelling. And more importantly, they're both just wonderful humans, and we're so grateful to call them our friends.